Grace and mercy and peace be yours from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear fellow children of God, our God is a God of power and strength, a God of art and music, majesty and mathematics. He is a God of wisdom and a God of order, a God of holiness and justice, but also the God of love and grace and mercy. Heaven and earth are full of his glory. He is worthy of our worship and adoration, and it is for this purpose that God created the world. You and I and all creatures were brought into this world for the single noble purpose of singing the praise of God. When J.S. Bach wrote his music, at the end of every piece, he wrote SDG, or Soli Deo Gloria, to God alone be the glory. And in Psalm 150, verse 6, we just sang, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. In paraphrase of God's own word, the hymnist wrote, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sea and sky. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. On this feast of the Holy Trinity, let us marvel again at our Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, as we are reminded by His word of our purpose in life. Namely, we and all creatures were created to praise the Lord, And after the fall, it is God's will to recreate us and all creatures to praise the Lord. In the beginning, all creation, God labeled very good. As we were reminded again in our reading from Genesis 1, our triune God carefully put the world together in beauty and perfection. As God the Father spoke, the Word of God, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, proceeded from the Father and brought all things into existence as the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep. Then our Almighty God, our wise God, entered into divine counsel with himself before making us, the crown of his creation, let us make man in our own image. And then in love, God took care to form man in a special way, in a hands-on way, personally forming him out of the dust of the ground and then personally breathing into his nostrils the breath of life so that man became a living soul. In the beginning, all creation was in harmony and worked in harmony as a fine-tuned tribute to its creator. Just as an orchestra made up of many instruments plays different parts together to create a beautiful symphony, so all God's creatures worked together at the beginning in perfect harmony. Mankind itself, Adam and Eve, were perfectly in tune with one another. Adam perfectly, wisely named all the creatures and classes of animals and plants. Together, Adam and Eve perfectly and in harmony worked the garden in loving companionship. And as they did their work, they brought praise to God. They also praised God intentionally as they walked past 
the first altar that God erected in the garden, namely the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As they marched past that tree and did not eat, they saluted God and said, we love you, we trust you, we will obey you. And so praise to God rang out as they proceeded to the other tree God planted in the middle of garden and took communion as they together ate the fruit of the tree of life in communion with God. But then the music stopped. They dropped the baton when they gave in to temptation. Sour notes rang out when they listened to the siren song of Satan. They doubted God's love. They questioned his word. They went from fearing God to being afraid of God. The faultless harmony in which their immortal bodies had been humming began to break down and the agonizing process of aging began. That was the day the music died and the day their bodies began also to die. So out of tune had they become that they didn't even want to serve God. Instead, they ran away from him in horror and fright. But God came to them with forgiveness and the promise that retuned them into his instruments once again. He promised them a savior from sin and a deliverer from death. He promised to restore perfection to them anew in a new paradise of his making. God sang out to them a new song and all who believe in him sing with. But there's a lot of noise that isn't God's music. Starting already with Adam and Eve's firstborn, Cain, many, and finally most of God's own creatures despised God's music and worshipped themselves and created things. To this day, the cacophony of false teaching is everywhere. But God wants his pure music to restore harmony. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And in order for that to happen, God has sent us out to sing his new song. Having paid in his own body the penalty for man's corruption, Jesus sent out his disciples with the words of our gospel lesson, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and gather disciples from all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to keep all the instructions I have given you. And surely I am with you always until the end of the age. It is God's clear and stated will, his gracious will, that all be restored to perfection. God wants all creatures recreated so again they can praise the Lord. For that to happen, for creation to be restored, for people to live again in the joy of holiness, the world needs to hear the gospel. That's how the Holy Spirit creates in us a clean heart and restores a new spirit within people. Armed with Jesus' word and sacraments, the disciples went in accord with the Great Commission toward every point of the compass. They traveled by land, 
They traveled by sea to carry the words that bring eternal life, to lead people everywhere, to once again know what it is to live in harmony with the one true God. They gathered disciples from all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to keep all the instructions Jesus gave so that once again everything that has breath could praise the Lord. For example, the Apostle Paul preached to the city council in Athens, God is not served by human hands as if he needed anything, since he himself gives all people life and breath and everything they have. From one man he made every nation of mankind to live over the entire face of the earth. He determined the appointed times and boundaries where they would live. He did this so they would seek God and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being." Today as then, all creation needs to face the music, the beautiful new song that restores harmony with God. All people need to know their creator, their redeemer, their sanctifier, who through the gospel recreates them to serve their and our one purpose in life. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. <clears throat> but how can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one about whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace, who preach the gospel of good things. In this season of church conventions, we praise God that we have fellow believers with whom we work to prepare and send preachers out to the world. Preachers who know the song well, who have studied thoroughly its notes and rhythm so that the music is pure and beautiful. In a week, several of us will head to Mankato for the 100th convention of our ELS. In three weeks, Sarah and I will have the privilege of gathering with fellow confessional Lutherans from around the globe at the convention of our Confessional Evangelical Lutheran Conference. Shortly, some of our women will attend in Orlando, Florida, the convention of the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society. God gave us his great commission, and we carry it out best when we work together as his disciples. How much better trained Titus, Julius, and Kareem are thanks to the joint work we do of seminary training as a church body than they would be if they had to rely on me to teach them everything they need to know here in Carthage. What a blessing that as a synod we are able to train pastors and teachers for the holy ministry so that beautiful feet can go out and bear the good news. We do that work together at Bethany Lutheran College and Bethany Lutheran Theological Seminary. Wells does that work at Luther Preparatory School, Martin Luther College, and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. Between our two synods, we send out missionaries to over 30 foreign fields. Walking together, we print valuable Christian literature and instruction materials in multiple languages and distribute them even in places where we're not allowed to go, like Pakistan. Together, we establish home mission churches so that the truth can be heard wherever your job might force you to move in our country. God created us and all people 
to glorify him both now and forever. St. Peter wrote, as we heard just a few weeks ago, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We bring him glory with our lives, and we bring him greater glory by helping others to know him, the only true God, that they may be recreated by the Spirit and praise him too. When Jesus promised, surely I am with you always until the end of the age, he was making it clear that the Great Commission was not just for that first generation of disciples, but for all disciples of all times. Therefore, it is our work to share the gospel, to teach the word, to let people know who the one true God is, and to tell them what God intended from the very beginning of time, that we all, in harmony with him, praise him. It is our God-given work to tell people how Satan deceived us, but that God's own dear son, Jesus Christ, came to save us from sin and death. It is our task to baptize in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that they might be recreated in God's image which was lost after the fall into sin. God wants to restore all people to sonship, to their position as children of the Heavenly Father, because as Paul wrote, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. Specifically, God tells us our assignment is to teach all the instructions Christ has given us. In his mercy, God has revealed to us in scripture all that he wants us to know. All the notes so that the whole choir of believers might sing his praise in perfect pitch and harmony. God is the composer and he is the conductor and his score was written not with too many notes, nor with too few. Together, all his words make one sweet symphony. As individuals, as a congregation, as members of a synod, and as members of a worldwide fellowship of synods, by sharing the gospel, by baptizing, by teaching God's word, by training and sending workers into the holy ministry through our mission offerings, God has privileged us with the work of bringing about the fulfillment of Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Or as we sing in the Te Deum Laudamus, all creation worships you, the Father everlasting. May God continue to fulfill his mission of recreating all things through his powerful gospel until all the world, after his return, sings together the everlasting Te Deum Laudamus. Amen. <laughs>